So hey everyone, welcome back. So in the last video, we learned how to create AWS account, then how to create your first IAM user. Then we created our first S3 bucket and security group and understood a little bit about Redshift. Now in this video, uh, we're going to be looking more technical concept from the cloud size. So in the previous videos, we discussed about the data warehouse architecture. So what we had is uh, data coming from multiple sources, build doing some ETL in between and building a dimensional model. So we have data like uh, data can be anything stored at anywhere. So we will look about that into RDS when we talk about AWS RDS. So data is stored at different location as we looked into AWS console. We had like all the different location on the side. So it will be stored across the world. So data will be coming from all the other locations. Then we're going to be doing ETL. So ETL, we already talked about this is our extract transform load. So we will have some kind of machine in between that will be extracting data from the RDS or all the other sources. Then doing some transformation and then putting that data onto the final data warehouse or any system we want. Data warehouse, we already understood. It is good for analytics and easily scalable. So we're going to be looking into that. And at the end, we have business user who is basically analyzing all the data at the end. Okay. So before like uh, we jumped into the cloud, we need to understand the choices we have right now. Okay and why we are going on to cloud and when we should use on-premise server. So let's uh, first look about if you think about on-premise server using the on-premise is basically you buy a actual server. So you buy all the CPUs, hardware, ramp and everything and build the server. So if I want to build my on-premise server, I can just build it in my room and just plug it into the power and just create my server. But, but the thing with the on-premise server is that let's say if I run out of space, okay, uh, I just buy the hundred GB hard disks, let's say, and my data is growing at rapid pace. And now I want one TB hard disk. So I have to go to the market and buy new hard disk uh, to scale that. Okay. So let's say if I do it once, but well, what, uh, let's say in the six months against my data grows at rapid pace and I don't have the money or like I don't have the capacity to actually scale those servers. So this is the one problem with the on-premise server. Then I need people who can manage this server. So let's say my database is running like 24 hours and something happens, power goes or anything can happen. The dust comes into the servers and everything. So I need people who can actually manage those servers and it requires a lot of cost of ownership. Okay. Now this is uh, what the on-premise servers is, but when we talk about cloud so let's say if you select the cloud way so cloud is easy to get started so in the last video we looked about how we how we just on the one button we created our s3 bucket then you can same way you can create your web servers or your redshift cluster or databases so you can just click on some buttons and you can get your servers easily you can easily scale your servers so if you want to add more storage more space and everything so you can do that then you don't have to worry about hardware. So AWS manages everything. You don't have to worry about hardware, the scaling up. If one disk fails, so you don't have to worry about because AWS will make sure your data stay safe and replicated across different locations. And you only pay for the resources you use. So you don't have to pay. So over here, if we build the onto my server, so I will have to pay everything. Even if my, if, 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 even if there, is, there are no users who are using my product, I will have to keep running the web servers for the amount of resource I buy. So let's say if I buy one TB hard disk and like 60 GB RAM. Okay. And it is only consuming only let's say 10% of the servers. Okay. Server space. So my all other resources are going waste and it is uh, basically impacting my cost. So on the cloud, you can only you know, allocate resources based on your needs. And if you want to scale, you can scale it easily with the one click of a button. So that is the advantages of using to cloud. Now let's talk about the data warehouse technologies or storage on AWS. Okay. So we have two ways we can basically create our storage. One is the cloud managed. So the AWS provides some of the services, which is AWS RDS, which is relational database service. Then dynamic DB is AWS NoSQL database. Then S3, we already looked, we can store your files, images, whatever you want and the redshift. So over here, you don't worry so over here you don't have to worry about your hardware you only have to worry about the 
building part so operational part you have to worry about so what kind of tables you gonna have data models you gonna be building all the operational work you only focus on that you don't worry about the hardware and managing and everything and another thing is uh, we can build a self map so we can easily spin up the ec2 machine ec2 machine is consider it as an online computer so i can just basically ssh to the computer online and just run the server so this is this will be same as your personal computer but on the cloud so you can install postgres manually and do the things so over here you have to manage a lot of things so you have to manage your backups encryption databases instance and everything so this is little bit of managing but this is completely based on the requirement so let's say if you want mongodb for your application and aws does not provide mongodb it provides dynamodb and you don't want to go with dynamodb because your application requirements are different and you need mongodb so you can install that particular database onto your ec2 instance and do the work so this way you have like both the option one is your cloud manage and your self manage so it is completely based on requirement there is no comparison which one is better but ultimately cloud manage uh, is better if the requirements is matches if the requirement matches your needs but self manage it's also the requirement based so you can go with the whatever you whatever the needs now over here we're going to be mainly focusing on the relational database side and the redshift so on the data warehouse what we have is uh, basically uh wait uh yeah so over here so over here we have the data warehouse okay then we have the cloud then on the cloud and on premises so on the cloud we have cloud manage self manage we already talked about then in the cloud manage we have sql no sql and files so sql in the sql two things comes one is your aws rds which is relational database and one is aws redshift which, which is basically a data warehouse and there are no sql files files can be stored onto s3 bucket or some of the other data storage services that are available on the aws and we have self manage which is basically ec2 so this was the difference between cloud and on premise and what are the advantages and disadvantages what are the different service advantages how you can you know, leverage cloud for your needs so in the next video we're going to be deep diving into aws redshift we're going to be looking into architecture and different things attached to aws search chip so see you in the next video thank you